with all the church buildings everywhere. New ministries popping up online every single day on YouTube and on Facebook and self-proclaimed prophets and prophetesses. And Have you ever wondered though how many are actually ready to die for the Lord? Like literally go to a FEMA camp and suffer for the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You ever wonder or, or am, I, am I the only one? But it always goes back to Peter, don't it? I mean, this man walked with God in the flesh for roughly three years. Was confident when he said to the Lord, I will die for you. And ended up denying him three times. I mean, later on in life, he died for the Lord, praise God. But that took growth, maturity, development, getting more intimate with the Lord. Then he was ready to die for the Lord. But in, in the beginning, in that three years, he didn't realize. Peter was very confident. He literally, I, yo, Pete really believed he would die for the Lord. But he didn't realize he was still afraid of death. And he was afraid of being an outcast. He was afraid of the crowd. I hope you see what I'm saying to you. But let me tell you something. I am so grateful for Peter. I'll tell you why. Peter's terrible mistake became one of my biggest blessings. What you mean by that, Brother Wiley? Learning from him has kept me humble. It should, it should do the same to you. If I ask you right now, are you ready to die for the Lord? And without hesitation, you're like, yep. It's going to tell me a lot about your character. We have to trust that the Holy Spirit will keep us in that hour. Man. And this is why you got to build your relationship with the Lord now. This is why you got to read every day. This is why you got to fast often. You got to pray without ceasing. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together with the saints. This is why you need a chain of command. This is why teachers and shepherds are needed more than ever now. True leaders and shepherds that actually love the Lord. Man, I got so much to tell y'all, man. My wife and I get a lot of dreams, okay? And some of y'all be like, man, you got to give the dreams. Why don't you be putting them on YouTube? Saints of God, you got to understand that when so many false Christians take advantage of y'all or try to, and they build YouTube channels just because they always got a dream, because they know people are fascinated with that, stuff like that, it moves me to a, a godly anger. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to be any part of that. You know what I'm saying? It's no different than the Christian hip-hop fake rap scene. People say, yo, man, you know what I mean? You got blessed music. Why don't you, why don't you, you know what I mean, collab? I don't, look, I don't, like the, I don't like the Christian rap industry. It's all fake to me. 99.9% .9 of it is not real. But the same thing applies, man. All of these people always coming out with a dream. And a lot of them built like thousands of subscribers because of a dream they had. People can idolize a gift. or idol and, and half of them ain't even being truthful with y'all. You ever notice when their subscribers ain't watching as much, all of a sudden they come out with a dream? But saints, I got to tell y'all about this dream. I, I got a few, but... If I could at least just tell you about one, I've seen demons that run around inside of human beings, y'all. Literally, humans becoming the demons, okay? Humans becoming the demons. Where they got nails and they scratching people and then the people get infected and become a demon. It's not a game, saints. God has been speaking to his children. I had a dream that was just very, very wicked. That's, that's all I could describe it as. It was beyond the principality or power 
It was a spiritual wickedness in high places that came out of a Masonic temple in this very dark and gloomy atmosphere. And it almost looked like it was on a graveyard. And it was coming for me. And I called on the name of the almighty God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, with so much authority. More authority than I think I've ever felt in my life. And I had the victory in that dream and I woke up. Saints, the children of the devil are not taking no days off. Why are you? But the dream that I want to tell y'all about was so troubling this morning. Man. My wife and I and the little ones, we was witnessing the gospel, okay? I want you to see this dream now. Matter of fact, let me say this. Lord Yahshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, blessed be the Lord God of heaven and earth. Wisdom and might are his. He controls the seasons. He sets up kings and he brings kings down. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals the things hidden in the darkness and reveals that brings them into the light and reveals them unto his servants. Blessed be the name of the Lord in Jesus Christ's name. I pray for the hearts of everyone watching, Lord, that if they're right with you, that you bless them and bring them to a new level in you. Touch them with this word, oh God. If they don't know you, I pray you'll convict their heart and cause them to, to give their life to you. If they're backsliding, if they're hypocrites, if they're lukewarm, if they're religious Pharisees, Lord, convict them to repent and get saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, bless you, Lord. Speak through me, Lord. I'm your servant. I must decrease that you will increase, Lord God. I love you and I just thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Saints of God, in this dream, this was such a troubling dream. And he gave the interpretation immediately. Interpretation is reserved for the most high. Okay, if you see people that boast about interpreting dreams, they always interpret a dream. Nah, God is the one who will allow you to understand a dream. Because you got to be careful. There's some people, they know dreams are a very coveted thing. And that's why a lot of people get a lot of subscribers when their YouTube channel is a lot of dreams. A lot of dreams, they interpret dreams. But if you're dealing with somebody who's running game, if they are, they're, a, they're a spiritual hustler and they're just hustling you, you could give them a dream out of sincerity and ask that pastor to interpret it. But if they're not really led of the Lord, they're going to mislead you. You know what I mean? It's not hard for someone who's witty to just be like, oh, yes, I see. In the dream, uh, the car represented this. And you're supposed to leave your husband. And uh, 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 you know what I'm saying? It's like, what? But this dream woke me up straight up. I mean, I sat right up on the bed. I was like, wow. And just started downloading. God was allowing me to have the interpretation. It was a giant field, humongous field. And there were Americans all sitting down, almost like, you know, back in the day with 4th of July, my mother, you know, she was broke a lot. So 4th of July, she would get the blanket. I'm not promoting any of these holidays and nothing like that. I'm just telling you something. And she would get the blanket, a cooler with some little sandwiches and some bootleg generic cans of soda. And you know what I mean? We be in this giant field with everyone all around waiting for the fireworks, right? Because it was free. <laughs> and in this dream, there were so many people, like more than the eye could see. And they all had blankets, so they were just sitting down and talking amongst each other. And I seen a flash of an old cannon, at least one of them. And off in the distance, very far back, was the White House. Man. And all of a sudden, I heard the releasing in the boom of a cannon. And my wife and I, with our, you know, the whole family, were ministering the gospel to people there. Telling them, of telling them about the Lord. And when I heard the boom... I looked up, and this cannon, it, it looked like it was fiery, almost like, you know how the Bible speaks of Revelation, great hailstones coming down, and I looked, 
and it went over my head and smashed into the ground and wiped people out. And it looked like it had sparks and fire with it. It was, it was really terrifying, saints. It wasn't about being afraid, but in the dream, it was like, what? Especially, I got my family with me. And all of a sudden, multiple booms started going off. And my wife and I are telling people, get up, get up. But as cannons were falling down and wiping crowds out, people were not moving at first. It was like they were shocked and didn't want to believe that their own government was wiping them out. I Even just thinking about this, y'all. Even just thinking about this dream. And we're trying to convince the people. We're like, yo, come on, let's go. And we're like, okay, shake the dust. We out of here. So me and the fam, we're going around the back end. And, and people are still in shock. And, and I'm seeing cannonballs just hit crowds right in front of us and wiping them out. Fire everywhere. And as we're climbing up this, like, it was almost like a, like a, I can't even explain it like a hill. And there was this old lady reaching up. And I turned around and I pulled her up. Ah. You know, as the dream faded out, we, we were able to escape. But so many people... They deceived themselves. They, they couldn't believe that their own government would wipe them out. They refused to believe it even when it was happening right before their eyes. Saints of God. I had a dream not too long ago. I seen flags being blown in the wind like you know them little flags you would do during like parades or whatever when you were young and you didn't know no better and there was a whole ma whole bunch of them and they were just going like this they were flapping really fast and God spoke to me in the dream he said this represents the principality of pride and he led me out of this the, like a condo where the flags were like they were on like a, a shelving unit and I went through the condo through the sliding door and I went down this little slope of uh, like a backyard and it was a lake and there was a big frog like just sitting there looking at me and he said this represents idolatry I look and I'm like, the Lord is so disappointed. And I want to use the word hurt. But I believe grieved is, is a more proper word. He's very grieved how many Christians in America lifted up Trump higher than Jesus Christ. And do you know that the night I had this dream, I believe it was the next day, it was, it was the weekend, and we go out, you know, Lord willing, and we feed homeless people and minister the gospel to them. We just, y'all don't know about it because we don't, we don't just upload tons of videos of what we do secretly. Once in a while we do. And we even have this video on camera as, you know, we're witnessing the gospel to them and we had a table set up and just giving out stuff and a literal like legion of trucks and vehicles passed by through Atlanta. We were down in the gutter, you know what I mean? Like the center, you know where the Ferris wheel is and all of that. And there's an old nasty Catholic church. It's so ironical because all the homeless people will sleep there and the doors be shut though. You know what I'm saying? This, is, this Catholic cult, which is not Christianity, is 
so rich it, it, it would it would make your jaw drop but yet the homeless will lay out in front of this building so we said yo let us pull up and and strike the beast right at one of their own buildings and let's minister to the homeless but as we were there and all of a sudden this convoy of must have been at least 30 vehicles honking their horn Trump is gonna save us Trump is the savior Got a KJV, I like that. Hey, we have a Bible trivia. Why don't you have a seat? Come on, have a seat, man. You need a Bible. Give it up. She wants that one. She wants that one. Is that yours? Yeah, I want to keep it. Let's get it. She wants the tiny one. Y'all ready? Y'all ready for Bible trivia? Yeah. Okay. That's you? Amen. King James is my joint. And it grieved us. We were like, no, Jesus is the Savior, man. What is wrong with y'all, man? Idolatry. Idolatry. To the point where there were people that became popular overnight. And some of y'all know who I'm talking about. Some guys who would have maybe 20,000 subscribers started having dreams of Trump. And he'll be president again and all of these things. And he's at like... 200,000 subscribers now. And even though they're false prophets, listen, if they say they're a prophet and they say the Lord gave them a word that will come to pass, in the Old Testament, they would have been stoned to death. Now, I'm grateful that we're here in the New Testament where the blood of the Lamb gives them a chance to repent. You understand? But a lot of them are not repenting. They're coming up with excuses and oh, I got my days mixed up and oh, I got to eat my humble pie and y'all going to say what y'all want to say and very prideful, very arrogant. At a point like that, they're supposed to shut everything down and go seek the Lord. So sad. So sad. Idolatry. But going back to the to the uh, to the dream saints of God especially if you're in the United States like me if you look around all around the earth there has been so many governments and kingdoms and dictators that murdered their own people and you learn about it and you've only seen your government go into other places in the name of democracy. But let's be honest. There seems to always be another motive behind the scenes. But when I think of North Korea, when I think of that wicked ruler and how many he has murdered. You know how many Christians he's murdered? Do you know what happens to you if you're caught with a Bible in North Korea? You look at China the dragon country you look at how many of our precious brothers and sisters over there suffer they are suffering but they're very blessed believers I'm telling you they love Christ on another level you look at other countries places in Russia and Colombia and Look all around the earth and, and you, you see what happens. I mean, look at what dictators have done in the Middle East and wipe out millions of their own people. Their own people. And let's not, let's not hide it. You look at the Holocaust. But if you knew who what it was that was funding Hitler and them. The very people that were funding Hitler were the same bloodline of the people being murdered. But we never would think America would murder their own people. Not on a mass scale, right? Yes, brothers become victims of police brutality and that doesn't mean every officer is an evil person. There are believers in the police 
uh, unit. There are believers on the block. God has people everywhere. Saints, you can't fall for the trick. But we're outnumbered, that's for sure. Brothers in Christ that are in the police uh, arena, they're outnumbered. You need to pray for them. Sisters in there, you need to pray for them. Brothers and sisters in the whole hospital, pharmaceutical, doctors and nurses, they're outnumbered because most of them have sold out. On the block, you talk about Christ, you got to have a strong anointing to get these people's attention now. Wherever you go, it could be Walmart, it could be anywhere you go. You need to have the presence of the Holy Spirit to wake these people up. Words ain't doing it anymore. Not alone. You need words with the power of God with it or they're staying asleep. I can tell you that right now. But this dream, God is letting us know is coming, saints, faster than you know. This persecution is going to catch people by surprise and they're not even going to know what hit them. But for you that take heed, you're, you'll be ready at least as much as you can and God will take over where you fail. That's the key. Saints, I got a, I got a, a phone call the other morning. I was, I was up around, I don't know, it was like 5 o'clock in the morning or something like that. And it was a call from like the Netherlands. And I wasn't going to pick it up because saints, y'all know. And that's one thing I'm grateful for all of y'all in, in this ministry is that you put Christ first. We've always taught you that. A lot of y'all didn't need to be taught that. But it's a habit we say, lift Christ up above all leaders. Lift Christ up above all people. Never have somebody equal or over Christ. Go to him first when you need a prayer. Go to him first when you need a uh, you know, encouragement. Don't come to a leader first. You go to Christ first. And then if Christ sends you to a leader, that's great because Christ can use that leader to do something for you. But we're not always going to be able to pick up every phone call and answer every email. Come on, saints, you know, and I appreciate you have that understanding. Because real ministry is, it doesn't start in the digital realm. Real ministry is organic. Then it gets brought into social media and internet. But you never, listen, ministry can never start inside of the matrix. It can never start in there because once they shut all that down, you're going to see a lot of ministries fall out. But if your ministry is live and organic and it's every day, wherever you go, you're telling people about Christ. You're gathering with clusters of saints. You're doing conferences and all, then, then you, you, the Lord, will, he got you. You know what I'm saying? But I looked at that phone and God said, answer it. And I answered it. And this man immediately started prophesying. And it, I ain't going to lie, it threw me off. You know what I'm saying? Because is this gonna is this a real prophet? Is this a, 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 a religious person trying to divine something? And I don't want to push God away. So it, it threw me off a little bit. And, and saints, you're supposed to be prudent. You ain't supposed to believe everyone that got a word for you. And you ain't supposed to rebuke everybody either, though. You got to be led of the spirit. I'm not going to get into what he said, but it, it had me going in the prayer closet when I got off the phone with him. OK. This man. said, my name is David. This is the second time we spoke because I ain't going to lie. I, I, I try to give him the benefit of the doubt and <laughs> I won't get into it, but. God told me, answer that phone call if he calls back. Because the Bible says, despise not prophesying. So I wanted to be careful. You know what I mean? When you fear the Lord, you, you, you got to move like that. The Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So when I picked up, he said, brother, my name is David. He said, my wife and I have been forced out of our homes and forced into a mental facility because of our boldness for Christ and because we're prophesying, well, at least him and warning people about the abomination, telling people to repent and speaking the words of the Lord, they called us crazy. He said, they're forcing us to take medication. He said, but I'm praying over it and I'm binding the sorcery and it's not having an effect on, it's not having an effect on my mind. And I'm, I'm like trembling, listening to this man speak because I'm like, this is happening, saints. They are labeling Christians crazy. And I wasn't even able to speak with that man long. But when he started to speak,
There's things that I really can't talk about that he said that was very troubling. But one of them was, there's a lot of people lukewarm and they're hypocrites. He said, God is with you. But there's a lot of people that are not sincere. And I hope that's not you watching and listening. You, you better get right with the Lord while you can. But when I got off the phone with that man, and one other thing that was said is that persecution is already happening way worse than we think. Okay, saints? And it's coming, he said. This is a man that him and his wife are forced into a mental facility because of their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to let that sink in. Man. I go in my prayer closet. I'm weeping before God. Something the supernatural happened in there too And I, I'm not going to get into that right now All I'm going to tell you is Please get your house in order While you can Restore your relationship with the Lord While you can Forgive others while you can Read your word while you can Get as close to Christ While you can Many years ago I'm not going to get too deep into it because, again, I get it. I respect your time. Many years ago, I warned people prophetically. The Lord said, my son, this is years ago. He showed me this. And I, I warned. I've sounded the trumpet. My wife and I have been sounding the trumpet before people were making money off YouTube and all of these things. That's why we never partnered up with YouTube. We never did 501c3. We always wanted to be solely yoked to Jesus Christ only, period. And, and I'm so grateful we struggled in the natural realm, but we were so blessed in the spiritual realm for so many years because it made us more like trusting in him more. Anyways, and this is a prophetic warning that I gave years ago. Some of y'all remember it. Some of y'all is going to be new to you. The same way Satan came through Pharaoh to wipe out the children to try to stop the anointed Moses from rising up. In the same way Satan came through Herod to wipe out the children to try to stop the great anointed one, the Messiah, from rising up. And of course he couldn't. He couldn't. But it's the same thing now. Listen, y'all better catch this. I'm telling you, you better help spread this video. It's the same thing now. And this has been going on for 30 to 40 years at least. Satan knows that the armies of the Lord are on the earth already growing and developing. He knows about the 144,000. He knows about the two witnesses. <laughs> Hallelujah. He knows about the valley of the dry bones. He knows that there are so many that would rise up. To be appointed and anointed and called from the womb. So what does he do? Instead of wiping them out by throwing them off a cliff. He has millions upon millions of children. Prescribe sorcery medication at a young age. And it's so sad because my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Don't the words say that? And the parents would take the advice from satanic teachers who have no type of experience in that department. But they want to say, you know, we recommend you get your son on this Prozac or whatever because he's too hyper. But yet they're the same people that want to feed the children genetically modified food during lunch, cookies and high fructose corn syrup drinks, and then call you two hours later, talk about little Susie ain't sitting straight. She need a pill. She need a chill pill. God got y'all number, you wicked agents that were used by the Antichrist system to dumb down the children. You better repent before it's too late. But can't you see this is what Satan did? Because all he wants to do, you better catch this, he wants to throw you off course. When you came out of the womb and your parents thought, what's wrong with my child? She's talking about she's seeing things in the room. What's wrong with my son? He's talking about he heard from God this morning. And because the parents were not real believers, whether they were fake Christians or straight up infidels, they thought what? Let me, maybe, maybe the teacher's right. Maybe this person is right. Maybe my auntie is right. Maybe my child, something wrong with her brain. Not knowing that the prophecy of Joel 
is coming to pass. And Satan tried to drug and put sorcery on the minds of those children to stunt and stop the growth and development of them understanding and learning their calling. And then it morphed into drug addiction and heroin and pills. So many of y'all, y'all know this ministry. We love those in the streets. We love those who are bound to drugs and been into depression and street life because y'all turn around to be some of the most powerful men and women of God that we know. But this is what they have done. And a lot of you, you need to be healed. And I pray and I hope we can do a prayer at the end of this video for your healing in Jesus Christ's name. To break that curse of sorcery so you can move and operate as the soldier of the army of Christ that you're supposed to. Remember, we are in the army of Christ, but our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We got weapons they ain't even ready for. We got spiritual weapons, supernatural rep weapons. The two witnesses are going to be able to stop weather. People try to kill them, they will be killed in the same way. Out from their mouth shall proceed fire. These are two literal people. Don't let these clowns who don't know the Bible tell you otherwise. Now this ain't for you to get all puffed up where all y'all think you prophets and prophetesses. Stop trying to exalt yourself. Just humble yourself. But I have to encourage you. So many of you were victims from childhood because Satan was terrified of who you'd grow and develop to be when you receive Christ. Because he's been talking to you since the womb. Just like Jeremiah. And the devil didn't want that. So just like coming through Pharaoh and Herod instead of physically wiping out. And I ain't even going to get into abortion. What do you think that's really for? The number one reason for abortion. There's two reasons. Make no mistake about it. People, oh, it's profit. Planned Parenthood is linked to Luciferianism and it's all about the money. No, it's not. They're already wealthy beyond your understanding. Number one, they want God to be angry with his own people. They want to provoke God to anger. And they know murdering children does it every time. Go back to the children of Israel when they would offer up children on the altar of Balaam, uh, on the altar of Baal and Moloch and, and so on and so forth. But the number two reason is they try to wipe out as many prophets and called men and women of God as they can. Every time there's an abortion, you have no clue what that child would have became. And some of them are under the altar of God waiting. For judgment. Wow. Wow. But the devil can try all he wants, but he fails every time. Remember that he failed. Moses still rose up. He failed. Our great Messiah still rose up and he failed again. Because people are being delivered by the power of the Holy Spirit. The yoke of sorcery is breaking off the minds of the people. And they're becoming mighty men and women of God. Humble. Not self-exalted. They don't want no glory. They don't care about an image. They just want to move and operate in the power of God. To wage war against the kingdoms of the Antichrist and Satan. And exalt Jesus Christ. And I say so be it. But now you know why you were attacked. So many of y'all were called crazy and you were not even crazy. Those pills started to make people crazy. Sorcery, you know, the witch's pot. That's all it is in pharmaceuticals. It's a witch's pot. Now, there are some people that are literally demonically oppressed, they're demonized, like the gathering and the demoniac. And yes, they can and will be set free if they get to the feet of the Messiah. If then they can get to true people of God that have the power of the Holy Spirit. We've seen demons come out of people's minds like you wouldn't even imagine. Glory be to Christ. But the majority were not crazy. And then we ain't even going to get into the whole new uh, mental weapons they're coming out with. And I, I, we just put out a video about that that was actually old, but people didn't know about it. But now let's move forward. What is the next step in this? I warn people, they're going to label Christians crazy. And that phone call reminded me. And it was a wake-up call to all of y'all. There are many Christians that are going to be labeled crazy in this last hour. 
You are a true child of God and you actually hear from the Lord. But to them, you're crazy. There's no God talking to you. That's a, that's a mental disorder. That's what they believe because they're so wicked. First things first, before we get into where I'm going next, remember all through the Bible, Jesus Christ warned us, no servant is greater than their master. If they hated me, they're going to hate you. If they murdered me, they're going to want to murder you. You will be hated of all men. All nations will hate you for my name's sake. I'll put the scriptures on the screen. No problem. Read them on your own time. Matthew chapter 5, blessed are you when men revile and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. But Christians have been taught another gospel and another Jesus by a whole lot of fake ministries and Ahab pastors that they would be shocked to go to a FEMA camp. And they would literally think God is not with them. And a lot of them will be offended and take the mark. God forbid, but I'm just telling you the truth. Do you know how much the Lord loves his saints that are persecuted for him? That got to die for him? There's a certain glory that God needs to get. And a certain type of glory he can only get by the death of his saints. So if you're chosen, wow, wow. If you're chosen to go to prison for him, die for him. There's a glory that he desired to get out from among your life for him. Doesn't mean he's not with you. And sometimes it can feel that way. Joseph went through a season where he felt forsaken by God. And I got a message coming out about that. But I want to tell you that the Lord warned us that we would be hated of all men. All nations. For the truth, remember that. Go to Amos with me, chapter 5. Wow, God is so good. Amos 5, look at what it says. It says in verse 10, They hate him that rebuke in the gate. They abhor him that speak uprightly. So when you're warning people, and you're rebuking people with love and you're telling them the truth about their sin. You're warning them about this. You're warning them about that. You're trying to tell them the truth. They hate you for it. You better remember what I'm telling you. I'm trying to bring this to you. Second Corinthians, when you read it, and I believe it's, yes, yeah, chapter 4. Paul breaks down all that they've been through and were going through, right? Look at this. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Wow. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which are alive are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Wow, this is amazing. So look at all they went through, but they expected it because they were taught properly. They were warned properly. Nowadays, when you give your life to Jesus Christ in one of these regular ministries, which is the majority, thank God for the real, that are few and few in between, but the majority are not led by the Lord. They teach a false gospel. They don't even warn you. They don't even say, congratulations, you gave your life to the Lord. Now get ready to get shot at by devils in the spirit. They don't, think about this logically. Let's say somebody joins a military or an army. They go through boot camp. They get dropped off in a plane in the middle of a battlefield. And then when they get shot at, they're like, what's that? Why are they shooting at me? Why would you want to do that? A person would do that because they knew they were signing up for war. Saints, when you gave your life to Jesus Christ, you were signing up for war. The Bible says no man that warreth. Now, we just don't fight with flesh and blood. Our weapons of warfare are spiritual. But it's a war. Our war is in the fight with the fallen angels, the principalities, the powers, and the, and the, foot, and the foot soldiers, the demons, and all of these things. And there are really the children of the devil. Right? But the flesh and blood, the children of the devil, we are to pray for them. God will deal with them. But saints, I, I want you to know that you have to expect to go through tribulation. If they did it to your master, think about it. Okay, think about this logically. The whole world hates the Lord that you just received into your life. 
and you expect the world to love you, but they hate the Lord God that is now dwelling in you. Come on, saints. Stop following fake YouTube channels and ministries that always try to run game on you. And you can tell us all about them. Okay? So, again, I gave the scriptures on the screen. There's so many different examples. But to save time, read it on your own time. But if you go to Mark chapter 3... And remember, I've warned people for a long time. And, you, and listen, the Lord speaks prophetically through this ministry way more than you even know. Even during messages, when I was under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, not even knowing I was speaking prophetically. And God would give little clues and little prophetic nuggets for he that have eyes to see and ears to hear will catch it. And he was letting you know, this ministry is my ministry, says the Lord. Those are my servants, says the Lord. Any, any man can get online and act like a prophet. Oh, I prophesy that there will be judgment in America. Oh, I, I prophesy that uh, in the next four years, this president... Listen, anyone could do a vague prophecy that's more than expected to come to pass. But only God can give nuggets of prophecy that you go, wait a minute, what? For example, the message, the silence of the lambs. What would be the odds that... God would tell me to do an image of a lamb with a mask over its mouth. This was years ago. And now look at everybody with a mask over their mouth. I just got an email. We just got a message from a sister who was literally blown away. She was watching the message, um, the image of the beast revealed. Right? And in that message, she points out that under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I say through Christ, Adam was infected, so God had to quarantine him. This was about a month before Wuhan even happened. But God didn't want to do away with Adam because that's still his son. But he knew Adam was infected. He had to quarantine Adam until Jesus Christ, through prophecy, thousands of years later, would come in the flesh overcome the beast but he knew adam was infected he had to quarantine adam until this is about a month before everything happened with the pandemic saints and you see when prophetically speaking about adam means the entire adamic race had to be quarantined why because the people on the earth are sinning against God. So God allowed this to happen to show us we need to repent. That was, that was a month before it happened, saints. But I get no credit for that, no glory for that. That's all glory to Christ. But it's for you to know that God is with us. Because as we get closer and closer and we're bolder and bolder, there's going to be a bigger crowd pointing at the true servants of the Lord. There's going to be a bigger crowd pointing at the true messengers of God saying they're not of the Lord. They're of the devil. They're going to try to deceive you. Lie and slander. So you better know a tree by its fruit and you better remember the presence of God in this ministry and the experiences you've had from the messages that Christ, the king of the kitchen, gives through us. As servants of God, we love you. So now, going through the word. In Mark chapter 3, prophetically, we've been warning about this for so long. If you read it on your own time, it says in verse 21, And when his friends heard of it, they went out and lay hold on him, for they said he is beside himself, calling Jesus crazy. You go to Acts chapter 26, watch this. It says here in verse 24, And as... Paul spoke for himself. Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself. That means you're crazy. Wow. Much learning has made you mad. But look how Paul responded. I am not mad, most noble Festus, but I speak forth the words of truth and soberness. Now, why did Paul call Festus a noble person when he really wasn't? Because at that moment, that was wisdom. Because how are you going to call somebody crazy, but they're calling you an honorable man? <laughs> that was wise. But you see, they call Paul crazy. This is what I'm warning you prophetically about. You better catch what I'm about to tell you. 
Now, I got to speak in certain code language because of the B system algorithm. There's a certain judgment because so many Christians were idolizing. Especially idolizing the last king on this uh, land. That's how I'm going to say it in code language. Right? But this new king. Most people that are normal minded know there's something real creepy and wrong with him. When he talk about he loves when children rub his, the hairs on his legs. He loves when children sit on his lap. Look, I, where I'm raised, the hood I'm from. If, if that child ain't yours, bruh, and you let a child sit on your lap, bruh, something, I'm going I'm to I'm mark you. The Bible says mark them. I'm going to look at you like mm, you ain't babysitting none of these children. N none, of, none of the children I know. This is a man sniffing little girl's hairs and holding them inappropriately. And e Look at you as a mother would never let that man watch your child. Have you ever had a family member you know better? Uh-uh. I'll watch your daughter for you. You know, Uncle Luck. Nah, I'd rather call out sick than let you watch my daughter. Nope. Because you got that natural. So think about that. If there is a spirit of pedo there, right? Think about this logically. Not to mention he's a Jesuit, which brings the connection right back to the beast of Rome, right? Think about this logically now. This ain't because we, you know, you already know we don't deal with politics and all of that. We didn't vote. I've never voted in my life. Okay. But I vote for Jesus Christ. But anyways, just in case someone tries to accuse me. But not only that, but what would be the odds that a man by the name of Rachel would be assigned to be assistant to the top health secretary of the United States of America? Now, what you don't know about Rachel is Rachel is a man that has transformed himself illegally into the image of the Baphomet. And if you don't know what that means, the Baphomet is half is an androgynous, is half male, half female. Now, think about this logically. I'm not going to get into the whole topic because it's a whole nother teaching. But men and women that come into this ministry out from the Sodomite way of life they <laughs> very shocking things that they say after becoming born again how the sodomite spirit is one of the top most vicious spirits that satan is using in this last hour and these are people that came out of that lifestyle saying this and how they hate christ with a passion hate him on majority why do you think during their parades look at how blasphemous they are and it's always christ you notice that it's never muhammad or buddha or nothing they always blaspheme and mock the word of the lord and the son of god and sadly even the holy spirit what is that but yet they want to turn around and play a victim when we tell them the truth about what the word of God says but they're allowed to do all of that during parades and ain't nobody got nothing to say about that that's witchcraft at a high level. Some of you women have dated a man like that where he is such a victimizer, but he tries to act like the victim. Some of you men know women like that. They are a victim that now victimizes. And that's exactly what happens there. But as you know, certain brothers and sisters that came out of the sodomite lifestyle was breaking it down. I started putting things together like the antichrist spirit definitely favors that group because you got to understand they know instinctively what Romans chapter 1 says they know what it says and only coward pastors and so-called scholars will try to talk their way out of it because they're afraid of that crowd and they're afraid to be ostracized or look like a mean man do you think Jesus was afraid to to be looked at like a mean man why do you think they said he had devils why do you think the Pharisees hated him because he told them the truth regardless if they were offended or not same with the people of God that were killed for hundreds and hundreds of years they told the truth Regardless if they had to go to jail or die, they would rather tell the truth to make it to heaven. So what do you think is the odds that that would happen? I mean, if you go back to the days of Genesis, you read it on your own time. Like I said, this is not time for that study. But in Genesis, when the two men who were angels that came in the form of men came to the city, 
The Sodomites said, bring them out that we may know them. If you do your own studies, there is no way to deny it. It means they wanted to rape those men publicly. People were raped in Sodom. Strangers that were passing through would be raped by tons of people in the center of the city. This is a fact. So that, that lets you know that and of course, brothers and sisters that came out of that lifestyle will say, well, you know, not everyone in that sodomite lifestyle is a rapist or a pedophile. However, you know what God revealed to me? Do you know how like a Christian can have an average walk? There's not a lot of power in their life. But if they come to a conference where God is strong and there's real servants of God who actually have a powerful relationship with the Lord and where two or more are gathered. You better catch this. This is deep what God showed me. Where two or more are gathered in the name of the Messiah, his power manifests in the people there, right? Do you know that same principle applies with the wicked ones? When the sodomites who may have just a little bit of sodomite spirit in them. They would never rape someone or molest a child, but they just struggle with that. But when the crowd gets together, there's an increase of the perversion, filth, and wickedness. You can see it in the parades. There's no respect at all. And they always got to strike at our God. So this is why you can see what is happening. So this image of a Baphomet who according to the word of the Lord, is mentally insane. I know that's it's harsh, saints, but if you truly love someone, you got to tell them the truth. If you're a supervisor at a job and a guy walks in and says, hi, here's a note from my psychiatrist. Uh, if a guy walks into your office and you're a supervisor and he says, look, uh, two days ago, I woke up and realized my whole life I was a giraffe. I'm not even human. I identify as a giraffe and I'd like you to address me as uh, Jerry the giraffe and, you know, respect the fact that during lunch I need to eat a certain type of food for giraffes. And in your mind, if you're a follower of the Messiah and you choose your career to be like, oh, OK, Jerry the giraffe. Well, <laughs> welcome to the company. Ooh, that's a long neck you have. Uh, you can sit over here if you can fit. No, you're going to be like, bro, something wrong with you, man. If you want, I could pray for you at lunch break. You're not a giraffe. Okay. I'm going to tell HR that you said I'm not. You're not a giraffe. What do you want me to do? I'm not going to lie or believe a lie and offend my God to please the demons inside of you. You're not a giraffe, Jerry. You're Bob. You're 30 years old. You live at home with your mother. You're not a giraffe. So if you bow your knee to that, you are not a real believer. And the Bible says if you're a pleaser or a man, you are not a servant of God. And the reality is we are loving people. I'm not talking these, those fake Christians that say God hates fags and God hates this and they're going to hell no matter what. They're agents of Satan. I ain't cool with them because they don't represent Christ in a loving way. But love is not an emotion. Me loving you is telling you you better repent. That's love. And we live in a generation that is so prideful and so cold. The minute you bring a correction to them, they're gone. But the real ones know to appreciate correction. But this image of a Baphomet who's mentally insane. See, when it talks about health and the government and they having authority, it's not just physical health. It's mental health. The Antichrist seeks to change times and laws. You think a person like that who hates Christ and hates what you stand for with a passion. A Baphomet image is now in charge. A mentally insane person is in charge to determine if you're crazy or not. And you think it's a game, saints? You think, look it, they're going to start calling more and more believers crazy. Why do you think the Billy Goat just came out with an article that the people that are bringing the truth about him, they're crazy and they're evil. Could you imagine such a thing? Billy got anything to do. Billy got an opinion on what is evil. Could you imagine that? Look how many children suffered at his hands in India. Look how many children suffered. Okay, let's go to Isaiah chapter 5. Watch this. Why, as we wrapping up, because we got to pray, y'all. I'm a little bold because I have to be. The Bible says, cry aloud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Some of you little effeminate men in the back can't handle it. You need to repent. 
Well, he looks angry. I, why are you not angry? You, you follow the Messiah. They blaspheme your God every day and you're happy about it? I'm in the joy of the Lord. I love being around my wife and children. I love being around brothers and sisters that are in the Lord and we have a great time. But when I get on a camera and I talk to thousands of people, I ain't got time to joke with you. And all y'all saints, I appreciate you dealing with my boldness because a lot of y'all are in agreement. Praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 5. Look what it says in verse 20. You better catch this. Last day's prophecy. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitterness. That put crazy people as sane and sane people as crazy. Do you see it now? So the insane people are now the ones we're looking to get advice from and ask who's actually crazy and who's not. An insane person is in charge to determine whether you need to go to a mental facility or not. God forbid. Yeah, right. It's time to go, saints. It's time to pack your bags and get ready to go. Start dying to yourself every day. The only way you're going to be willing to suffer for Christ and die for him is if you're dying daily. Why do you think we read in, in Corinthians, they, they, every day they're in, the, they're, die, they're in the dying of the Lord. Why do you think it said in Corinthians that every day they die to the Lord? Because every day they woke up knowing I could die today for Jesus, but I'm already, I'm, I'm ready for what reason? They're dying daily to self. Every day they woke up and said, I could die for Jesus today. And because they've been dying to their own will and dying to the world, right? And they're in Christ and he's now their life. They're dead in Christ, not to Christ, but they're dead in him. They'll be able to endure to the end. You see, that's the secret. Sister, brother, if you want to assure that you'll make it during that troubling time, that, that Jacob's trouble, this hour that's upon us, Wake up every day knowing I must mortify my members, the Bible says. That means kill off your desires and live for Jesus Christ. Because that way when they threaten you with death and you're already a dead man and a dead woman, you'll be able to overcome the fear of death and die for the Lord. Now some of you will be harpazoed. You will be caught away in the clouds. I pray that happens to a lot of you. Some of you We'll be able to escape and go certain places in the wilderness and the mountains for a season. And I pray that happens. But a lot of you will have to make a decision. FEMA camps are coming. Death is coming. Okay. And you have to settle it in your heart. Stop hiding from it. Don't run in a cave and hide from the truth. It's not going to help you. Avoiding this video and just rejecting what I'm saying is not going to stop that fire from meeting you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego loved the Lord so much, they settled it in their hearts. Saints, why do you think the devil keeps increasing and taking more and more freedom? Now they're saying two masks, not one, but two. Now they're starting to make shots at anyone with a beard. You're going to have to shave that off because the mask don't sit right. Because they know people of God, there's a lot of people of God that grow a beard for a spiritual purpose. Now, that's not a law. You don't have to. But God told me to grow my beard for a spiritual purpose. They're putting not only the human DNA in the abomination, but pig DNA and things like that. Imagine all the ways they're trying to turn God away from the children of the Lord. It's, it's, man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So you better get ready. They're going to label many Christians, people that have gifts. People that see visions and men and women of God who actually prophesy and say, this is the Lord speaking. My children, I am coming. Be ready. People like that that actually speak by the power of the Holy Spirit, they're going to be like, this woman is insane. Lock her up. And remember, forcing the mark of the bees won't work. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean they can't put someone into a corner where they have to choose. Okay, if you don't want the mark of the beast, you have to die. Or if you don't want the mark of the beast, you have to starve to death. That's technically not them fully forcing you. But to hold somebody down and inject them with the abomination will not be on that person. Because they're not in agreement with it. They didn't will for that. But if they say to a believer, you have to either take this mark or die, the believer has to choose death. They have to. You understand? Now... What I want to get into right now is 
we're going to bring all this together with something that you must know about. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Thank you, Lord. He just reminded me. The reason I brought up the mark of the beast is because when it comes to other medications and sorcery, anything they try to force on a believer, if that believer prays over that medication in faith, he can break, she or he can break and nullify the power of that witchcraft. Didn't Jesus say in the end of the Gospels, Mark 16, that no, any viper, any scorpion, any poison will not harm you? You think he was only talking about literal snakes and scorpions? No, the children of God, no, the children of the devil can try to infect, can try to put in deadly sorcery poison into the, the bloodstream of believers. Now, if that happens to some, that's a terrible way to go out. But blessed are you when men revile and persecute, imprison you and try to kill you and kill you. For my name's sake, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Saints, you have to remember, if you're counted worthy to die for the Lord, it's because he has a special, uh, really, if you want to know, he got, a, he, got a, he got a crown waiting for you. He chose you to suffer for him. Because when you meet him on that day, you're going to get a greater reward. So yes, it's harder now. It's like you work all week, but when you get that paycheck, you're like, okay, it was worth it. When you suffer for Jesus Christ, it'll be worth it on that day. It is worth it now if you're in a certain place with him. You rejoice in your sufferings. Remember, they praised him in jail. And if, listen, and if God don't want them to kill you, they can't kill you. Look at how many times they try to kill Paul before he finally got killed because it wasn't up to them. Even they, do you know they even fasted to their demon gods and still couldn't kill Paul? He would be lowered over in a basket. Look at how they locked Peter up in jail, but God said, no, nah, I don't want him in jail. Come on out. He sent an angel. Do you believe that can happen for you? But if he wants you to die, you'll get your head chopped off like John. Keep it real. Like, what's the big thing? What? Look, I'm not saying it's easy. But if you have this type of mind, see, as a true shepherd of God, under the great shepherd, I'm trying to help you out by giving you a healthy balance. These cowards will tell, no, you're going to be raptured. Oh, really? I got something I'm going to present to all these fake teachers online, and I want you to respond to this. Let's go ahead. Let's deal with it now, saints. I want you to see this. This is how we're going to wrap it up for the end of the night. So remember what I warned you about and it lets you know, be wise who you talk to, be wise who you tell certain things to. Not everybody is worthy for certain knowledge. Jesus even said, don't cast your pearls before the swine. For some people just stick to Christ and him crucified, tell them to repent and get saved. Others go into detail about the mark of the beast. You got to be wise. Get into details with certain things, but you got to be wise. Okay, let's bring it all together. My question to anybody who is only putting all their hope in the rapture, they're not even considering they might go to a FEMA camp. They're not even considering they might die for the Lord, which is so, so dangerous. The Bible even talks about a healthy balance. Didn't even Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have a healthy balance? They say, look, if we die, we'll praise the Lord. But if we live, hey, you're going you gonna to see how much we praise the Lord. They balanced it out very, very well. So here, here's what I, I got a question for those that are being deceived to not even prepare mentally and more importantly, spiritually and even physically for tribulation. They automatically believe the false teachers who are greatly uh, loved online. Woe unto you when the world loves you. OK, they're believing the lie. Now, again, I believe in the heart puzzle, but let me show you how biblically it doesn't add up. You ready for it? When it comes to pre-trib, watch. In the Old Testament, okay, if you go to Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, watch this now. We'll do it together just real quick. Daniel 7, 25. You ready for it? Watch this. Talking about the Antichrist. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until the time and the times and the dividing of times. You see where it says he shall wear out the saints of the Most High God? Well, that word in the original Hebrew is the word Kaddish or Kaddish, right? And it literally means holy by lifestyle and separate unto the Lord. Okay, you better catch that. You better catch that. Then if you go to like Revelation 20 verse 4, it talks about the saints being beheaded by the Antichrist. 
for refusing the mark of the beast. Let that sink in. Now, my question is, remember when I brought up Peter in the beginning of the video? Peter wasn't ready to die for the Lord because he had to get a greater relationship with Christ, right? To finally be ready to die. Let me ask you a question. On average, what is the percentage, do you think, if a Christian gave their life to Jesus today, they would be willing to die for him tomorrow? It's almost never the case, right? Let's be honest. Why? Because you have to grow and build a relationship with Christ to love him more. Does that, okay, let me give you an analogy. Let's say in the world, a man takes a girl out on a date. He don't love her. He's just trying to feed her some food, take her to a movie so he can fornicate. Yes or no? If a shootout happened, do you think the average player is ready to take a bullet for a girl? He, he only trying to get a one night stand with? He ain't really, he ain't not going to die for her. But a man that's been married 15 years that loves his wife, they grew to connect together. Do you think he would get in the way of a bullet for his wife? Of course he would. Why? The relationship is strong. Isn't that a good analogy? Let me give you one more by scripture. Jesus said, no greater love than this, than a man laid down his life for his friends. You notice his friends, someone he grew and connected with, he'll be willing to die for. So my question is this. In Revelation 20, all these people that are being beheaded, yet all the real saints got raptured, right? Do you think lukewarm Christians or just straight up someone who just gave their life to the Lord would be willing to get beheaded a month after the rapture? Because think about it. At this moment, the Antichrist is on the earth already killing people. You see how it doesn't add up? These are people that had a relationship with Christ. These are people that suffered with him already. These are people that were fasting. These are people that were putting the word in them. The Bible says, put your word in the heart that you will not sin against God. The word in your heart will cause you to never choose uh, yourself or life over Christ. That you will be willing to die for him. But that takes time to grow and develop. Why do you think he said many will come to me in a day and say, Lord, Lord. He said, I never knew you. That word knew you in the original languages. We were never intimate. We didn't have a real relationship. You weren't ready to die for me. So that shows you the people that are being killed are ones that had a strong relationship with the Messiah. Because you know very well, 99.9% .9 of Christians that give their life today to Jesus is not ready to die for him tomorrow. They're not. They don't even know nothing yet. They're just still growing in their baby stage. Okay, we're going to go one step deeper before we pray. All I'm trying to do, I'm not trying to beef with y'all pre-tribulation people. I want us to come together. That's not a separable matter. We should have separated over that. But I just want you to at least prepare for tribulation. Hoping to rapture all you want. I hope for it. You think I want to go through what's coming? But if it's going to give glory to God, if that's his will, then we have to settle it in our hearts, the Bible says. Now listen. One more we're going to go over is Revelation chapter 13. Revelation 13, look at what it says. Watch. You tell me now. Come on. How about this? I'll be a student for a moment. You tell me what this means. You ready for it? Revelation 13, verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Not lukewarm Christians that got left behind. Would God call a lukewarm Christian that got left behind the saint? <laughs> To overcome them. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. And to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. So wait a minute. Not only does he make war with the saints. But he overcomes them. Overcomes them how? He's wiping them out on the earth. As he's killing them. Others are rising up. You see? The 144,000. The two witnesses. All of this. Right? He doesn't overcome them spiritually. Praise God. But in the natural realm, see, the Antichrist is a beast of war. He's a brutal beast. But my question is, what does saint mean in the Greek right there? Do you know? Hagios or Hageos. Look it up yourself, okay? It literally means holy, pure, morally blameless, consecrated. That means it's not just they were washed in the blood of Jesus, but they were living holy and they were consecrated that means they were in the world but they had nothing like the world they were not worldly they were not lukewarm they were literally in the holy ghost and righteous by their lifestyle 
So how could, let's see if this all adds up now, and now you're going to see these false teachers are being used by the enemy to disengage you, to not be ready for what's coming, to catch you off guard. And now I see why the dream, wow, why God warned me to tell y'all about the dream, why a lot of people were shocked. Cannons were dropping, but they didn't want to believe it. Why? Because the false prophets and the false teachers and all of this, this false type of peace and safety. Wow. Wow. This false comfort of everything's okay. This will never happen to you. Caught all of them by surprise. And even when people were being wiped out, they couldn't get up to run because they were so shocked. Watch this. How could, if the, if the saints are taken in the rapture before the Antichrist wages war on the earth, who are the saints that are being killed by him? So you're going to tell me, you're going to sit there and allow someone to lie to you and try to argue this fact that, oh no, the lukewarms, the ones that were sinning and living lukewarm and hypocritical, they had no relationship with Jesus, but they went to church. The ones that were left behind, those are the saints. Those are the saints of God. The ones that were left behind because of their wicked ways. Now, God sprinkles saint just God sprinkles some saint dust on them and they become saints overnight. They're ready to die. They didn't even want to fast. They were fornicating on their second, third, fourth marriage. They were living wickedly. They wake up, the rapture happened. Oh no, Lord, I'm a saint now. I'm ready to die. It don't work that way. Saints, I'm telling you, these are people that were living in Christ the whole time. They were fighting against sin. They weren't perfect, but they were saints of God. Do you know that when they say we're all sinners, I want you to watch the video we put out called the We're All Sinners Lie. I want you to make sure you go to our website, Revelations, revelationsofjesuschrist.com and watch the human temples of Baal. Can you handle the truth? The DNA of God and the mark of the beast. This is absolutely crucial, as well as the gospel of vodka, okay? I'll go to the website. They're all there, and some are on the YouTube channel that have not been banned. Saints, we're running out of time. Get your house in order. Get right now. Live for Christ now. You understand what I'm saying to you? Because this is it. It's over. It's over, saints. I love, we love y'all so much. This is why we tell you the truth. They're going to start calling more people crazy. The FEMA camps are coming. Persecution is coming. This is not fear mongering. This is me warning you. Do not be afraid. I'm telling you not to be afraid. Jesus says, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body. But fear me, says the Lord. God did not give you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Perfect love cast away all fear. So do not be afraid. Love the Lord. Live for him now. You'll be ready to die for him tomorrow. And not every one of you is going to be beheaded. Not every one of you got to die for him, but a lot of you will. I'm, I, well, brother, say God forbid. Okay, God forbid, but if that's his will, I can't say God forbid. But we got to start thinking this way. Every day you wake up, you brush your teeth, you talking to the Lord in your mind, say, Lord, I ain't going to lie, Lord. I hope to be raptured. That'd be a fun moment. But Lord, if I got to die, I don't want to trust in my flesh like Peter. Just please, Lord, get me through it. Meet me in the fire. That's all I ask, Lord. Meet me in the fire like you did to them three brothers in Daniel. If I got it, Lord, meet me in the lion's den like you did for Daniel. That's all I'm asking, Lord, is meet me in the fire. That way, you will be my strength in that hour. Holy Spirit, it was prophesied that I don't have to worry. You will speak through me in that day and hour. I only trust in you, Holy Spirit, that you will speak through me. That boldness will rise up in me. You don't think that Stephen had no inclination at all that he was about to be killed? You don't think a little bit his flesh trembled, but it got overrided by the Son of God. He took over his body. He shined like his face was shining like a, like a, a light bulb. And he was willing to die at that moment and be stoned to death because God took over his body. God will take over your body. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid, okay? We love you so much. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let us pray. Say it with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I repent of all sins. Forgive me if I've been a hypocrite, if I've been lukewarm, if I have not been living right, and I'm not ready to die for you. Jesus, have mercy on my soul. 
Help me to die daily like you command me to. Help me to sacrifice my life. I'm supposed to be a living sacrifice, Lord, which is my reasonable service for you. Holy and acceptable unto you, God. You said for me to be holy, for you are holy. You're telling me to be holy and not just by the blood of the lamb. And Lord, I give you all the glory. You are what makes me holy. You, what you did on the cross is my way to heaven. But I have to endure to the end. I have to prove my repentance by my actions, you said. You said the Holy Spirit is only given to those who obey you. So clearly, Lord, I can't just live how I want to. Lord, help me to desire holiness and righteousness and make me hate wickedness and evil and filthiness. Father God, I pray for my enemies. I pray for this man. Um, I pray for this man, Levine, who's one of the ones in charge of health sectors. I pray for the the presidents. I pray for kings of the earth. I pray as many get saved as possible. I pray for as many can be saved. I pray for my enemies, oh God. I pray that lukewarm Christians and backsliders and wicked Christians will get saved and actually make it in. I pray, oh God, that the true saints of God, that are saints because of their lifestyle, they're saints because they're consecrated, they're not of the world, they're morally blameless, they're pure and holy, they're hagels, they're kaddish. I pray for them to endure to the end and make it. I pray they will not be afraid. And those that you can turn into saints, oh God, make them into saints in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I know why John the Baptist was beheaded because he told Herod the truth about his perverted, adulterous lifestyle and it got him killed. They hate those that tell the truth. They hated you, Lord God, because they loved the darkness. You said no servant is greater than their master. Lord, help me not to be caught off guard and, and offended when the world hates me. May I be honored that they hate me because you're in me. May I be honored. May I not be caught off guard, Lord, if you choose me to suffer for your name, to be imprisoned or killed. May it not catch me by surprise because I know you said it could happen and it will happen to many. And it will happen to any follower that we will be hated for your namesake. But you also said, blessed are we for great is our reward in heaven when this happens. And Lord, I would love to be harpazoed out of here. I'd love to be raptured out of here. I want to hope in that. But help me to prepare for tribulation. Help me to be balanced, Lord. A good balance like you said in your word. I love you, Lord. I love you so much. And I pray right now, Father God, if I ever had any... I'm praying on behalf of everybody now. Say, Lord, if I had any chemicals invade my brain, whether through needles or whether through medication, all sorcery, Lord Jesus Christ, break it off my mind. Heal me. And put me back on track on where you call me to be in the army of the Lord. Anointed and gifted. Called. Now I say that because everyone has a different calling in a different position. Some are called. Some are chosen. Say Lord whatever you called me to be. Wherever the devil hindered me from the womb to now. Restore me. What's the word Lord? Help me Jesus. I, there's a certain word. Restore me back to the position and the calling you ordained me to be in. Heal me and supernaturally magnify the gifts within me to be used for you. You prophesied it in Joel. Holy Spirit, I acknowledge through the blood of Jesus you are poured out unto me. I love you, Holy Spirit. Use me, Lord. Use your gifts through me, whether dreams or visions or prophecy or tongues, whatever it is. Use me in this last hour, Jesus Christ. I believe in the gifts. I believe in the fruit above that. And I believe your power is still here. I still believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Help me to seek you with prayer and fasting, O oh God, and not grow weary in well-doing, knowing in due season you will lift me up. In the name of Jesus Christ, keep me from falling, Lord. Prepare me for what is coming. And I pray for anyone being accused of being insane that is not insane, that you deliver them and have mercy on them and comfort them in their mind and nullify the sorcery being forced into them. And if any are actually insane, like the gathering of demoniac, I pray, Jesus, they'll fall to you on their knees and be delivered. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 
Amen. And now, saints, I pray right now, anyone that's ever had any damage by injection or by pharmacy, by sorcery, by lying, calling you crazy, you're ADHD this, you're that, you're this, you're that, I break it off of you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. By the sound of Jesus Christ in my voice to those that are broken before God, I pray for your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. For God has spoken to you in your mother's womb. He had a plan to give you over to the Son of God. He had a plan to call you into the armies of the Lord. And whatever Satan did to, si to bring you off track, I speak that you get right back to where you're ordained to be. Supernaturally reinstated in Jesus Christ's name. Be healed. Now stand up. Put on the whole armor of God. Hope for the rapture. But prepare to go through it. Prepare to go into the fire. Balance yourself out in the Lord. Be ready. Be sound-minded. Be ready. Be sound-minded. And love the Lord in Jesus Christ's name. Love Him. Love Him. Love Him. All the days of your life. I can't imagine the day I don't even please you no more. Before that, I'd rather eat All on the, the floor. Days of my life. Because you are desire And if I gotta die for your name and face Nebuchadnezzar I'll be okay as long as you in the fire And Lord, I can lose money, lose car, lose gifts, lose a house As long as I ain't losing my friend And like Daniel, they can try to conspire and feed me to the lions I'll be okay as long as you in the den And if the Antichrist rises up before the rapture And the mark of the beast comes, now I'm facing the crime and now I'm watching Christians getting murdered one by one right in front of me And now I'm feeling the pressure while I'm waiting in line I can't trust my own flesh, I learned from Peter, Lord, if my faith wavers in time I know I can trust in your word, you promise nothing can separate me from you Lord, that's Romans 8.39 